The following program may contain mature subject matter. Viewer discretion is advised. To those of you tuning into this episode of the Washoe Podcast, thank you. For those who are watching for the first time, welcome. The views and opinions of this podcast are mine and mine alone. They may or may not reflect the same views and opinions of the entire Western Ontario Super Hockey League, all people considered. However, that being said, I declare that I will continue to work tirelessly hard to bring this podcast to you. I will continue to deliver important information, highlights from any games that are streamed, and relay that information with honesty, with enthusiasm, with professionalism, and with integrity. I will do all of these things with the same care and dedication to the Washoe League as I have done in the time that I've been involved with this senior hockey circuit. If you have any questions or concerns about anything I have ever said on here or while doing play-by-play -play during games, please feel free to contact me, your host, Andrew Rogers. Hello, everyone. Andrew Rogers here, the host of the Washoe Podcast. It's uh, great to be back with you guys once again. Thank you very much for tuning in. Another episode of the uh, Washoe Podcast Finals Edition, uh, sponsored by VMS Sportswear and Apparel, as always. Do a tremendous job in sponsoring this podcast, so we really appreciate them. And, uh, yeah, so this is our first Finals Edition, I believe. I can't remember if last week was a Finals Edition or not, either way. Uh, we're one game in, and uh, what a game it was. Uh, we got video highlights from us. We got uh, highlights also from 519 Sports Online at the end of the show for you as well. Um, they do a tremendous job. They've done a tremendous job all year long uh, covering the Washoe League and uh, many other various leagues that they cover. They just, uh, they're everywhere. And uh, we really support or appreciate the support and work that they do for this league. So, uh, their highlight pack is going to be available and shown here on this podcast at the end. Uh, we also have some interviews coming up here. Joel Campbell joins us as long as, um, as well as uh, Bill Ryan and Brennan Feezy of the Alvis to Killer Bees, the playoff leading scorer. And uh, we got all that coming up here as well. And uh, we'll get you updated and get you previewed for games two and three. Um, yeah. I don't know, man, I, game one was was entertaining. A um, little bit slower, obviously, than the uh, semifinal series games that we saw. Uh, not as high scoring, obviously, but I think in a lot of ways that was anticipated given the fact that it is finals now and the defensive structuring is important. Uh, not as many penalties as well, which was key. Uh, but the teams definitely tightened up and it was uh, the score was very in indicative, in indi <laughs> indicating of, of such. I don't even know what I'm trying to say anymore. Um, <laughs> but we've been treat we were treated to a great game one, and we're gonna be treated to even better games two and three. As the series drags on, uh, it has the makings of a seven gamer. Who really knows what to say at this point? Uh, but uh, like I say, we got some good interviews coming up. Uh game highlights with Trey Hamilton and John Delaney on the call. And uh, like I say, the 509 Sports Online coverage of it as well. Uh, but without further ado, we'll get to the highlights of game number one. to the Washoe Cup Final. For Alveston, they had to go through a, a local rival, a former WOA member and brand new member of the league who had an impressive first season. 
and the Petrolia Squires, and they had to take down the defending Western Ontario Super Hockey League champions in the Stratford Fighting Irish. No easy task for the Thunder. They had to go through the Stratford Jets, who many might say are not the most skilled team in the league, but they had the best goaltender by numbers in the league in Evan DeBrower. And then, second round didn't get any easier. A two-hour drive down to Tilbury, and they bested the Tilbury Bluebirds in six games. Here we go, folks. Hearts are racing, including mine. It's time for the Washoe Super Cup. If you're ready, I'm ready. Pruder and Roberts on the draw. Here we go. Stops it with the stick, but can't slow it down all the way. Now Pruder tied up by Barletta. Anthony Galdart turns it over. McEwen fires a shot. Block, rebound. Pruder blocked again. Barletta chips out the center. Here's Reverie. Mike Reverie in. Reverie stops. In the middle, Fitzmorris. Back to Roberts. At the side of the net and covered up by DeConing. No words there. Bang, bang play. On taking penalties against this team is deadly. Here's a guy who is also deadly. Feesey fires it, knocked off a leg, and Thunder are going to peel off for a change. Brandon Feesey, 89, player to watch. If we had the old school camera uh, for for uh, ESPN that would focus in on just one player, I think it would be definitely focusing on him. 30 points so far in the postseason. Here's a man cutting towards the middle. Quick shot, save Sagra, rebound loose. Feesey shoots it wide. Freifogel from the point, shoots wide. At the side of the net now, Kudo takes it there, finds Thompson. Van Bokel activates, makes a move on Perry. Backhand's knocked down by McGowan. Kept in nicely by Roberts. No, it's a turnover. Here comes Perry. Perry, pass across, shot. Great save by Matt Sagrod. Terrible defensive zone coverage by the Thunder. Awful turnover. And luckily for them, their goaltender bailed them out. You can't make too many mistakes like that against this team. Can't get the wraparound, sends it in front, but it's right on the stick of Feezy. Feezy chips up. Here they come. Here's a mini two-on-one. Feesey shoots, saves Sagrot right in the chest. And he holds on, and 67, Chandler went hard to the net, and Abraham made sure to let him know. Abraham and Pruder tie up. Good support that time by Roberts, and it comes free eventually. Still loose on the wall, Rebery chips it by McGowan. McGowan and Rebery tie up at center ice. Still loose in feet, and McGowan stays right with it, though. Spots Winchester. Winchester, backhand pass, good stick lift, last minute there, here come the Thunder, two on one. Reverie with Fitzmorris, Reverie in. Pass across, Fitzy, score! Mitchell Fitzmorris opens the scoring in the Western Ontario Super Hockey League Final. one nothing, Tilsonburg. We love you, Fitzy. JD, the same thing we talked about that almost killed the Thunder a couple times. The Bees got caught with four in the zone, and the Thunder activated, and boom, a two-on-one. No mistake made, and it's one nothing just like that. Comes Feesey. Feesey with McEwen, and it looks like Bowers. That's a big three if I've ever seen it. Ten seconds. Thunder looking to just take this to the room. Barletta, Fitzmorris, five seconds. Chips it through center ice. McGowan is going to eat it in his own end. That'll do it for the first And that'll period. take care of the first period here. One period in the books in Tilsonburg. After one, the score, your Thunder won. The visiting Killer Bees, nothing. Officials are out. Teams are getting ready to get on. JD, what, uh, what were your takeaways and final thoughts from that first period? Um... Well, as I said at the outset, uh, play your position, stick to the game plan. There was a little bit of uh, wavering from that plan uh, on both teams. Uh, I think more so by the defense of the Thunder. You need to stay back, stay focused. They yeah. can't afford to give up chances. And again, just you know, stay disciplined. Don't get caught up in uh, in anything. The last thing you want to do is to give uh, Alvinston uh, a power play because they are extremely deadly. Yes, I agree fully, J.D. A power play for either team could make or break this game, right? And I know that the officials are going to be calling it tight, as they should here in the yeah. championship. Here come the Thunder onto the ice. And I'm sure when the Killer Bees get on, it's going to get just as loud. Here we go. Yeah, these are both very skilled hockey teams. Uh, a lot of speed, a lot of finesse. And 
there's just going to be, you know, attempts on both sides to, to try and draw your opponent into into something, but they have to, like, again, you know, stay disciplined and uh, don't get caught up in... Stay out of the box. Stay like out of we the said. box is the main thing. That's right. Yeah. His twin brother Anthony at the point. Here's McGuffin. McGuffin behind the net. McGuffin gets it to the point. There's Anthony Geldart, aforementioned. Sends it in. There's Kane Geldart. Back for McGuffin. Makes a move. McGuffin taken down. And here come the bees the other way. McEwen's on the far side. Good stick that time in center ice. Geldart gets laid out as he plays the puck. Too many men on the bees. They missed that one. Well, they, they missed the cross check, the interference. Here's Barletta. Like, in front of shot! Oh, what a save by DeCoding! He robs Edward. Excuse me, sorry. He robs Roberts. I was at a loss for words on that one. Roberts had a 2 0 lead on his stick. He did. He's, and just flat out robbed by Nolan DeCoding. He knows it too. He's smiling down there. Yeah. That was an excellent save, no question. That was a beautiful save. Just over a minute to go here in the second period. This will be Roberts and Pruder on the draw. I keep getting Pruder and Feezy mixed up. My bad, guys. Bear with me. Perry at the point. Fires. Through wide. Forsland chips it. Kept in. Quick shot wide. Fitzmorris on the puck. Fitzmorris chips high. Hopes for Rebery. Rebery's going to get on it. Keeps himself on side. Spins back. Finds Roberts. Roberts in. Shoots. Good save. That was a good stop by DeConing that time. Now Pruder up the wall, spots his man, gets it back. Pruder walks in, makes a move on Abraham, cuts to the outside, can't get it back in the middle though. Here come the Thunder the other way. Roberts for Fitzmorris. Fitzmorris walks in, stops up, spots, trying to get it to McQueen, but Pruder, a good stick. Here's McQueen. McQueen trying to get in front of Rebery. It's behind the net. 22 seconds to go. Abraham fires. Score! Justin Abraham! that are watching, they know the Killer Bees are a team that is known to strike late in periods and deflate you. I believe they scored with under a second left last game in the second period against Stratford. So, Thunder give it right back to them. And a great play that time to Jamie McQueen. Look out, here we go, 2 on one Spavero McEwen scores! So right back at them, 1.6 seconds to go. And the Bees are back in it. And I'm sorry, but I'm going to call out Jack Van Vogel and Chris Knotts. They were caught on that play. Terribly, terribly caught. And we know from when Elvinston came here, they tied it late just like this. And if you're going to play defense, please play defense. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, the, the both of them, they should have stayed back. And instead of, you know, charging... With that much time left in the period, what the hell are you doing activating like that? Well, that'll take care of the second period here in Tulsaburg, folks. Stick around. It promises to be an entertaining third. Get started here. I'm told that we have now over 400 of you loyal fans out there listening to the broadcast. We certainly appreciate that. We hope you're enjoying yourselves as much as we're enjoying bringing it to you tonight. So sit tight. This should be one heck of a third period coming up. All right, Roberts and Pruder are ready for the draw. Third period action, we're underway. We're not discussing where they're going to go and uh, have a beer with each other after the game. Probably not. Not in this, in this magnitude of a game. Uh, friends off the ice become enemies as soon as you suit up here in the Western Ontario Super yeah. Hockey League. Shot from the point, tipped in. McEwen tips it in. The Bees tie it up. And oh, how big JD that last minute goal was. And now McEwen's got a pair. Perry behind the net. Perry marked nicely that time by the Thunder. And here's Pavero loose in front. And he almost jammed that one in. Fitzmorris makes a move. Saddles everything down, fires up for Barletta, who kicks it. Look out, Barletta pestered, and Fitzmorris emerges. Fitzmorris, knocked down by McQueen, but right to Pruder. Here comes Perry, 
Stops up, fires. It hits Jamie McQueen, goes to the corner. Barletta just chips out to center. It didn't get out. Here comes McQueen. Could be a three on two. Look out. Whalen's with him. Rebery going to the net. Whalen backhander save. He had Rebery wide open in front and he couldn't find him. Here's McQueen. Looking for the backhand pass. Kept it at the point. Forslund shoots. Off a leg. Nearly trickled in. Now McQueen. Abraham fires. In the glove. It's loose. Still loose. It's going to him again. He turns that one over to Kudo. Here comes Kudo the other way. We're in Kudo. Cuts to the middle. He got a stick up high. No call. Two seconds and one. So we're going to overtime here in Tilsonburg. What a surprise. These two deadlocked at two. And the Thunder bench letting him know as Kudo's actually bleeding. So that could have been a, a double minor penalty right at the end of regulation. League. Look at the crowds we're getting. You get two of the most dedicated fan bases in the league going head to head in the championship. And it, it doesn't get any better than this. So, folks, it's overtime. Can't say anything else. Next goal wins. Let's keep it plain and simple for you. If you're the Thunder or the Killer Bees, lay it all on the line here. Because falling behind 1 0 in any series is not easy. Granted, Alveston did it twice already and came back. Yeah. Tilsonburg fell behind 1-0 in their semifinal against Tilbury. But you don't want to be that team in this situation in a series of this magnitude with a week off in between games. This is huge. Right, you don't want in center ice. Fry Fogel for Pruder. Pruder in. He's got Fisi with him. Shot big block by Van Bokel. Fitzmorris knocked down. Here he comes. Van Bokel joining the rush. Fitzmorris. All the way across, nobody home. Look out, the bees have transition now. Good stick though by Knox. Knox for Fitzmorris, for Rebery. Rebery can't get it to Fitzmorris though, and instead it's Feezy. Fry Fogel, look out. Big hit by Rebery, knocks his man down. But nobody was home to get the puck. Knox does eventually get it, and then he turns it over. Sloppy play here from the Thunder. McEwen, fresh off the bench, fires. It was deflected, almost went in. All these things could be avoided, just picking up their play. Yep. Van Bokel for McQueen. Here comes Jamie McQueen in. McQueen, Whalen, Whalen shoots just wide. Wide of everything, and now Feezy's going to get a fresh start. Feezy, two on one, cuts in, shoots, score. Brennan Feezy wins the game in overtime. Thunder get caught, and that's all she wrote tonight, folks. Yeah, guys, from there, um, just a couple graphics to get your way before we get into our interviews here. An update, uh, updated look at our playoff leading scores. Uh, Brandon Feesey, 19 and 15 now for 34. He has a three-point cushion over teammate James McEwen with 14 and 17. Uh, also on this list, Jacob Chandler of uh, Alveston, two goals, 14 assists. Franco Sprovero, one goal, 15 assists for 16 points. You also have Aiden Pruder in the top 10 here now, uh, six and seven, 13 points in 11 games played for Pruder. And uh, as well, you can also see some Stratford Fighting Irish members in there and uh, Dylan Denemy of the Tilbury Bluebirds in that top 10 as well. Uh, but again, um, as we look at our other graphic here, you can see the leading scores for both teams in the playoffs so far. Uh, Mitch Fitzmorris with 12, Brandon Kudo with 10, Mike Rebery with 10, Brendan Barletta with 9, Braden Roberts with 8. Uh, those are your top guys over on the Tilsonburg side of things. Um, you have over on Alveson, again, you have a lot of scoring up top there. Uh, Feezy with 34, McEwen with 31, Chandler 16, Sprovero 16, Aiden Pruder 13, Ryland Bowers with 10, Ethan Lamaru 9, Carson Perry 8, Bailey Freifogel with 7. Um, all uh, contributing offensively for a very potent Killer Bees lineup. And uh, again, they lead this series 1 0 after one game. Um, and uh, the rest of the series is as uh, laid out here as you guys can see. Uh, game two, this upcoming Friday night, eight o'clock at the BAICC complex, AKA the hive, uh, for game two and Alvinson, what will be a raucous Alvinston crowd. 
Uh, game number three switches back to Tilsonburg on Saturday, April the 13th, 7.30 start time there. Game four, Friday, April the 19th, 8 o'clock at Alvinston. And then we get into the if necessary game Saturday, April 20th, game five, 7.30 Tilsonburg. Game six, Monday, April 22nd, 8 o'clock at Alvinston. And then game seven all the way on Friday, April the 26th, 8.30 at Tilsonburg. So it could end up being a four-day wait between game six and seven if we get to that point in the series, which again, one may suspect the way game one certainly came off is this will be a tight series and really down to the wire. Uh, we could see a lot more overtime games. We could see a lot more one goal games. Obviously, if it does go to overtime, it would be a one goal game. But anyways, that being said, we've uh, we've been treated some excellent hockey here in the playoffs, and I don't expect that to change at least this upcoming weekend. I really don't. I expect the teams to battle again as they did in game one and have a similar result game twos and threes. Just a matter of who uh, gets the last shot in and uh, the last goal, I think is going to be a big key. Uh, but again, look for Tilsonburg to respond heavily in game two, even though they are on the road. I believe both teams match up well, and I believe both, both teams can really, uh, really determine the outcome off of a one shot. I think it's really going to determine who wins and, and who loses. Should be a lot of fun anyways. I'm looking forward to the call with Joel Campbell on Friday, and then you have Trey, excuse me, then you have Trey Hamilton and John Delaney for the call in game three in Tilsonburg at the Thunderdome. Uh, without further ado, our interviews. So first up, Joel Campbell, then we have Brendan Beasy, and then we have Bill Ryan to cap it off. And then, of course, on the other side of that, we'll close the podcast and uh, cap it off with the 519 Sports Online highlight pack from Tilsonburg. All right, here we go. All right, folks, uh, Washoe Hockey Podcast, Playoff Edition, Finals Edition. Uh, just absolutely thrilled to be bringing you this episode as we are uh, one game into the Washoe Super League Cup Finals. Alvin the Killer Bees leading the Tilsonburg Thunder 1-0 after a thrilling 3-2 overtime win in game number one. We're joined by commentator Joel Campbell of the Alvin the Killer Bees, uh, who joins me back in the booth in Alvinston for game two on Friday. Joel, great to have you back, pal. Welcome back. Hey, great to be back, Andrew. Joel, thoughts on thoughts on game one, man? Like that was uh that was a whirlwind of a game. It had a little bit of everything. What were your thoughts? Um, entertaining game. Uh nice close hockey, competitive, <clears throat> the kind of competitive back and forth you'd want to see in a final. Um, a little quieter in terms of offensive fireworks, I think, with just the total of five goals between the two teams. Uh, but uh, an even matchup with some solid uh, goaltending, some solid defense, and some nice goals both ways. Uh, game one didn't disappoint, and it set us up for a really uh, nice game two coming up here Friday night in Alvinston. Um, yeah, like you, you mentioned, the goals off the top. Obviously, yeah, for having from a team that has scored so many in their previous series, uh, Tilsonburg not so much, obviously, because their theirs was a little bit more low scoring. Um, there were some high scores in the game in the game, sure, but a little bit more low scoring in the Tilsonburg Tilbury series than it was Trafford Alvinston. Were you surprised though, at the regression in goals against and for a little bit. <laughs> I, th I thought at times um, the quality of scoring chances, right. Uh, uh, there weren't a lot of them. Uh, there were long periods of the game in different periods uh, where there weren't high quality scoring opportunities and giving some credit to the defense too. I thought shot blocking as well as uh, closing in, on the attackers uh, made a difference there, made it harder to get that puck um, to the goalies. There were stretches where the goalies were busy, but also stretches where they weren't so busy. Um, you know, it's, it's hard to keep uh, offensive fireworks every single game, every single series, but I mean, we're only into game one and we saw some uh, uh, tighter affairs in that last semifinal series between Stratford and Alvinston. Um, you never know what to expect here with game two and three coming up in the next few days. Uh, there's certainly the potential for more offense, but if they play the type of defense they did, if the goalies play as solid as they did through much of game one, uh, perhaps we're in for a tighter scoring series with less goals overall. But then again, like I said last week, expect the unexpected. Just when we right. think we've got it figured out, who knows, they're going to put up uh, combined totals of 10 plus in these next couple. Well, and they could very well, like the teams are obviously potent offensively, no question about it. Just look at the history, but um they, the two teams can score. Obviously, in a final, it's a little bit more you have to be defensively responsible if you're going to win the game. Um, what I thought was interesting as well is I watched, like from what I watched and what I could tell, 
The defense is very engaged offensively on both sides of the coin. There were um, a lot of times when you saw the play kind of come up the ice, you saw the defenses activate as Trey Hamilton called on a lot of occasions. And then you would see a lot of odd man rushes the other way. Like that, that, that I found really intriguing. What, what's your thought on that? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I saw it in the semifinals several times too, but I did see it in game one. Uh, they're not afraid to play that long pass and, and look for the open man. Um, the one thing you got to watch in a series like this, where it is a, a bit of a chess match where you're playing the long game, move by move, playing your opponent smartly is that you don't get too aggressive. You don't want to end up in a situation where you are on that uh, odd man rush defensively, um, obviously. But at the same time, uh, both teams have skaters that are quick enough and smart enough with the puck that if you do manage to find them with open ice with one of those long passes, you're going to send them in on a nice break. Uh, and so I wouldn't be too surprised to see them play that way. Uh, the, the question is, uh, in a tight defensive matchup, are you going to risk pinching one of those uh, defensemen uh, and, and you got to be careful not to overdo it there because there's a lot of danger coming back offensively the other way. Well, and like I was saying, and the, I guess the point I was trying to make too, is that like, you know, it, it ends up burning Alvinson in the first goal of the game uh, in game one. Um, you know, the defense gets caught. Mike Rebery by the red line there comes up the ice on a two on one with Mitch Fitzmorris makes a perfect pass across and beats it. Like what is a helpless Nolan to Coning at that point who, stretches across to try and make the save and, and Fitzmaurice ends up beating him. He's the leading scorer on the Thunder in the playoffs. Um, what I, I think is interesting from there is though, is that it seemed like Alvinston kind of learned their lesson about that defensive lapse that led to the first goal. Yeah, I, I did notice that adjustment. I agreed when I saw the first goal scored, I thought it was a little aggressive. Again, part of it's the feeling out process, uh, getting a new opponent in a new series. Uh, we know that Alvinston managed to uh, win the two uh, late regular season games, one a little higher scoring 7-2, the other one in a triple overtime uh, one-on-one situation. So as you move from Stratford to Tilsonburg, there's some adjustment there, uh, to be sure, figuring some things out. Um, and I did notice that. I, I thought the, the defense uh, played a little tighter, a little more responsibly uh, after that opening goal. And uh, even after the second goal that Tilsonburg scored, we saw Alvinson able to regroup their momentum, quickly strike to make it 2-1, which I think was a real game-changing moment. Well, that's what I was going to lead into before you kind of got into it there. Um, so Justin Abraham come, lets a, a howitzer go from the sideboards there that eludes about 17 people to get through to Koning, who's essentially helpless on it. Um, at your thought, I, I'm interested when you saw that go down the way it went down, and even Trey Hamilton, again, I, 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 I'm not picking on Trey because I love Trey, but he calls it almost immediately like I did that one time in Alvinston there with you. And he says, <laughs> he says, we saw this in Stratford. We saw this with Alvinston. They have a tendency to score late. And what are they doing? And you know what, again, talk about a defensive lapse there. And, and Trey calls it out again, too. Jack Van Bokel, number six in Tilsonburg, comes all the way down, activates on a play he really shouldn't because it's that late in the game and that late in the period, sorry, when you want to preserve that two nothing lead and you don't want to give up one late. And then obviously Alvinson comes back down and it's James McEwen who tends to score a lot of those late period goals. Yeah. I heard, I heard that right away. As soon as that was scored um, at one point, I, I lost the feed. And when it came back, the first words I heard was right after the two one goal. And it was, what are you doing activating like that in that situation? Right. And I'm like, well, that, that goes to show you. So perhaps a lapse there by Tilsonburg, but to Alvinson's credit, uh, as you and I both know all too well, they have found ways to score ridiculously late goals in tough situations. And boy, is that a momentum changer because by bringing it back within one, just seconds before you go to that intermission, that gives them a chance to jump out, get that tying goal, which uh, James McEwen does, right. uh, gets right. him right back in the game, uh, and, and it changes things. And um, while uh, it was close throughout the game, I thought uh, the Bees looked even sharper when they skated out in the third. Uh, and uh, as we saw, as when they got that game-tying goal to go 2-2, uh, it was just a real balanced, more conservative approach uh, to, to close out that final frame. So, yeah, that's a huge goal. Well, and it's funny too, because I even mentioned to James, I, I, I texted him, I said, 
because uh, when I did the replay, like, and I did the highlight pack or whatever, I says, oh, you didn't get all of that that um, goal at the end of the second period. And he says, I says, it's kind of curveball or uh, knuckleballed in there because he really only gets about half of it. And he kind of gets under it a little bit and it just kind of flutters in. And uh, But obviously the tip that he makes in the high slot there, like J- Josh Jameson from the point off the one face off, which again, Alvinson has done really well in these playoffs has won a lot of draws and, and in the offensive zone, defensive zone, wherever. Um, it seems like they have a real tendency to do that, but McEwen's tip is just a beautiful deflection that ends up beating a helpless Sagra to tie it. Yeah, it was a different situation, obviously, than the second goal that beat the Koning, but they were similar in a way that it's a shot you don't necessarily expect to go in. Uh, it fools a lot of people. Uh, it makes its way past the goaltender, but I mean, play, that's what playoff hockey is about, especially in a long series. Uh, sometimes the goals that go in and make the difference are those lower percentage shots that you just don't expect. Uh, it makes things tougher on uh, the goaltenders. They got to be ready for any sort of dump in, any sort of opportunity, even those strange angles, those strange hops. I mean, uh, you know, uh, obviously Tilsonberg, one thing I thought that was quite challenging, and it was mentioned several times, uh, even in the pregame, you could see it. And, and, go, and uh, at later on in the game, there were a couple of stoppages where it came up having that skating carnival beforehand right. uh, for people who don't realize what, what extensive figure skating can do to a sheet of ice. Um, yeah. If that puck hits the wrong patch or, you know, you get a, a defenseman who gets caught, caught in a rut or someone who's on a break, caught in a rut, anything that puck can flip up on edge. That puck yeah. can in front of a goalie it can be a nightmare. Cause if you get a bouncing puck and suddenly it catches a rut the wrong way, that puck changes direction. So who knows? I mean, whether that played a factor or anything, but, I, I actually wondered to myself if that was even in the players' minds going out there. I know they got to focus on the playoff game, but when you go out and the ice may not be in tip-top shape, that can affect the hockey game. Yeah, absolutely. And then obviously we'll go to the winner, Brendan Feasy. Um, So, I mean, again, this is a tremendous <laughs> hockey play by a very smart hockey player to make this move at that juncture in the overtime where he's been out for a while. Um, just your thoughts on the winner and, 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 you know, your general thoughts on the the big game one victory. So the first time I saw it, when it was live, it happened so fast. I almost realized it didn't happen. And, and the call was, was so calm, almost so matter of fact, I, I didn't, I didn't even realize it happened. But when you watch it back on the replay, I, I just cannot believe it. It's a one-on-two situation. Uh, Feezy is just smartly carrying the puck up. You have two defenders converge on him on an angle. And just when it seems like he's got no room to move, there's nobody really open for a pass. Uh, would have been an ideal situation had there been somebody open for a pass. He slips right between them and yeah. just scores an absolutely gorgeous goal. Uh, and, and it's all business. Uh, he doesn't go flash. He doesn't go glove side. He goes blocker side. And that's the job done. And I I think it caught everybody by surprise. It caught the defenders by surprise, caught the goaltender by surprise, caught the crowd by surprise, caught the commentators by surprise, I think. But, I mean, that's what it's like from uh, overtime hockey. Don Cherry once said, I remember in in the uh, playoff season where the Montreal Canadiens set a record for the most overtime uh, wins. 1993. Playoff season, 1993, the last time the cup was hoisted by a Canadian team. Ten overtime overtime wins. Yeah. That's right. And overtime wins. He said in overtime, especially the playoffs, put that puck on the net. Anything can happen. Yeah. Well, I'm telling you, man, uh, he finds ways to make things happen. And uh, coming out of that game, if you were to tell me three goals, two by McEwen, one by Feezy, including the overtime winner, the names weren't surprising. But I got to admit, the goal as it unfolded, about as surprising as it gets. And, and credit to Feezy. What a play. What a smart hockey play. So, yeah, a couple points here, and then I'll give the last question to you. Uh, first of all, great attendance by the Alvis and Killer B faithful for the road game in Tilsonburg. They went nuts after Feezy scored. I love the enthusiasm. They had almost a sellout, apparently, in Tilsonburg as well. There were a lot of seats that were shown that were not filled, only because they didn't have bottoms in them, as Trey Hamilton post, uh, pointed out. So, mm-hmm. again, great crowd on hand. Love to see it. Um Obviously, for Alveston to get that first win, um, you know, steal home ice away from the Thunder, that's a big thing, obviously. Taking game one of the finals, that's huge for momentum, obviously. Heading back to game two at their home ice in the Hive on Friday at 8 o'clock. 
Um, okay, so the last question I want to post to you, what are your thoughts on this weekend and how do you expect it to unfold? So look at this weekend, obviously, Alvinston has been blessed with big, loud, enthusiastic crowds. Uh, we see it with our own eyes in the three games they played in the Stratford series, as well as the games they played in uh, the Petroleum series. Packed houses, uh, multiple layers deep at the glass, the upper mezzanine area full, bar areas full. Um, uh, apparently, huge numbers watching the live stream, Andrew. I don't know if you've heard some of the figures, um, but uh, you know, upwards of uh, a thousand people watching on the live stream. And if you figure you got multiple people watching um, from home, that's that's a lot of people watching hockey. So I, I would expect, first of all, loud, enthusiastic crowd in Alvinston. I would expect uh, the Alvinston contingent to make another trip down to Tilsonburg and fill seats again. And yeah, when you watch the replays, you can hear how loud and enthusiastic they are. And we know Tilsonburg's a real hockey town. They're loud, enthusiastic, and enjoying it as well. Um, I know both teams are going to show up again with something to prove. Alvinston really wants to win in front of the home crowd to show their appreciation for their home fans, to build on the excitement that they enjoyed in Game 6 against Stratford, and to send the fans who were loyally on the road with them last weekend home happy along with those who were in their building. There is a big excitement in Alvinston, as well as, I'll say, in the wider Lambton County area. Um, a lot of people here in central Lambton, not just in Alvinston, but around are aware of what's going on with the killer bees. They're following it. They're tuning in. There's been a lot of great media coverage on both social media and mainstream media around here. And, and it's exciting. And uh, they're rooting for their killer bees. Do I expect Tilsonburg to bounce back as well and be ready to go? Absolutely. As we've said before in previous weeks, they've had two trips to the Super League Cup final they know this is another opportunity and they want to get the job done as to what we're going to see on the ice this weekend. Anything can happen. We know that in playoff hockey, but one thing's for sure. If you have the opportunity to get out and watch it in person, I would highly recommend you be there. You're going to get more than your money's worth. And if you can't be there, get the live stream on because it's going to be worth it. And of course, uh, I'm looking forward to once again, getting to call a game with you, Andrew, as we do game two together. Hey, are you not entertained? We'll make sure to entertain Absolutely. You. <laughs> Absolutely. That's our job. That's our goal. <laughs> if the product on the ice isn't enough, listen to us. Please don't mute us. No, uh, we're, we've been talking with Joel Campbell, commentator of the Alvista Killer Bees, uh, games two and three this upcoming weekend in the Washoe Super League Cup Final. Joel, thanks for doing this, pal, and we'll see you on Friday. Thanks so much. Absolutely, Andrew. Looking forward to seeing you in Alvinston on Friday night. Take care, man. All right, uh, we're back here on the Washington Podcast Finals Edition. Uh, Alvis the Killer Bees leading the Tilsonburg Thunder 1-0 in the best of seven Washington Super League Cup Final uh, after a 3-2 thrilling overtime road victory in game number one. Uh, very pleased to be joined at this time by playoff leading scorer and front runner for Washington Podcast Finals MVP, uh, Brennan Feezy. Uh, Brennan, it's great to have you on here, pal. Welcome, buddy. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. I appreciate, uh, appreciate you having me on here. Hey, a little overdue though, right? I'm just joking. Yeah, we'll take it. Yeah, we'll take it. <laughs> uh, first of all, congrats on the win in game one. Big W, obviously, for you guys. Going on the road in a, uh, a semi-hostile environment in Tilsonburg. No easy task to play there. Um, a full house after a uh, an, an ice uh, figure skating competition there, which obviously made the ice some wacky conditions. But for you guys to get the win, huge congratulations on that. Yeah, no, thanks. I appreciate that. No, as you said, yeah, they had a big day. I think there was a yeah, figure skating carnival or something before and lights were left down on the ice or some speakers or something. So there's a couple of deep, uh, deep rivets, I think, uh, in the ice that maybe made the game a little bit more choppy, but it's all right. We made it. We, we got the two points, so. Well, I mean, I mean, instead of the two points, we're not in the we're not in the regular season anymore, Brandon. I understand, man. I understand, I understand you missed a lot of time in the regular season, but we're in playoffs now, baby. Yeah, yeah, that is true. Sorry, the one nothing seriously. There, there you go. go. One nothing seriously. And obviously, big time for you guys. Um, I know this role of underdog is not something you guys like to label yourselves as, considering you've you've hung with the best of the best so far in these playoffs, given the fact that you took down your Lambton County rival in Petrolia and the defending champs in Stratford. Um, but it, it it seems like it's a little bit of a narrative, though, because Tilsonburg gets their third straight appearance in the finals. Um, but for you guys, like I say, to go in there and get game one on the road, that's huge. 
Yeah, no, 100%. That was kind of what we talked about before going in is if we can pick that one up on the road, especially only playing once on that weekend. Uh, right. We had a long way over till game two. So, I mean, coming in to Friday here with uh, one nothing series lead is definitely a lot better than going in, obviously, down 0-1. Right. Um, and, yeah, I mean, all year, I mean, the, like, the, I again, I only played three games in the regular season, but um, the boys battled all year. And, uh, it, like, it's a great group in that room, honestly. There's, uh, there, there, there's a lot of good hockey players in there. And I think we're showing that this playoffs. Yeah, really, this Alvi versus everybody mantra, you guys are really taking that and run with it. And again, having been around you guys as much as I have, I can really see the camaraderie. And obviously that's got to play a huge impact. The other thing is too, is this following. I mean, you guys, uh, when you're on home ice, it's electric in that building. And not only on the road, well, not only at home, I mean, but on the road, like everybody went nuts when you scored the OT winner on, on Saturday there. Yeah, no, honestly, I think like, I'm not going to lie. I think we got the best fans in the league, all right? Um, this LV versus everybody thing, again, yeah, as you said, it's, it, like, it's a good mentality to have. Um, obviously, you see the support that we have at home in Elvington. I mean, um, we packed that barn every single game. It's definitely one of the most electric atmospheres, I'd say, in the league for sure. And then, yeah, we're getting fan buses to games and, and a lot of following even. Uh, it started, obviously, in Petroli with the close rivals, and then we had a lot of people come to Stratford the next round. And uh, even in game one there, I'd, I'd say we had maybe even half the arena with Elvington fans. And yeah. uh, we see that at the end of the game, and obviously we really appreciate the support. It means a lot to, um, to all of us on the team, for sure. Absolutely. Um, so let's dive a little bit deeper into game one, obviously. Um, you know, I guess it wasn't what you were expecting um, coming off a hot series against Stratford there. Um, was game one kind of what you were expecting? Did it start out the way that you kind of figured it would, um, you know, take us through the early moments of it. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, overall a little bit slower of a game, I guess, kind of in terms of scoring, obviously it was only a three, two game in OT, um, where compared to the other series, we had like that 10, seven game, which was crazy, obviously. Um, but yeah, coming out as we talked about there. Uh, the ice conditions weren't weren't great there for game one, so that may have played a little bit of a factor in terms of uh, finishing off some plays um, both ways on their side and our side. Mm -hmm. um, and then again, you know what, going down early in the game, obviously not ideal, not what we wanted. Um, but as I said, we got a very resilient group in there, and um, you know, coming back, we got one, we got two, um, and then in overtime, um, we were just rolling. Hopefully getting that one opportunity and, and, and running with it. So lucky enough, I ended up putting that one in and um, yeah, the three, two, the three, two overtime win was huge for us there. Absolutely. Um, and that's the thing. So yeah, like obviously you guys go down in the first period there, one, nothing, you keep it tight um, in terms of like how the later of the game goes, Abraham scores the kind of a wacky goal there off the, off the sideboards yeah. through a maze of people that's, that beats a helpless to Koning. but we, there's 18 and, and, and change left. And you guys have this tendency to put the puck in at the buzzer. And I don't know what it is, but it's like, is it, is the message like, Hey, play, play the play to the buzzer. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. hundred percent. I think, uh, yeah, that's draft for series. We ended up putting one in with like 0. 0.1 or 0. 0.2 or who knows what was left on the clock there. Um, we didn't win that one in overtime anyway, but yeah, I think 1. 1. 1.1.6 or something second. Yeah, 1.6 for McEwen's. Yeah, yeah, for, for Q's there. And, like, obviously that's huge. He's been great all playoffs too. Like, I mean, um, like all the guys. It was a great play by Spro as well. Um, and then good finish by Q. So, like, yeah, we, we play right to the end. Um, <laughs> that's definitely uh, that's definitely been shown in, uh, in these past two series, that's for sure. Well, and that's just the thing. So for you guys to get that goal with 1.6 left, does the does the mood in the room change it almost immediately at that point? Yeah, definitely. I, I, I like as you know, and like in any hockey, you watch anything. If, if if you get a late goal, that just kind of springboards you for the next period. Uh, where vice versa, if you give up that late goal, True. obviously it's a little bit deflating going into that next period, right? So I feel like that was definitely a big advantage for us um, heading into the third. Well, and then, yeah, and then McEwen makes that unbelievable tip on the Jameson shot from the line that bull, that fools Segrot. And, again, it's just one of those high high slot deflections, and Segs is just kind of like a deer in headlights there because the one it goes beside his foot and in because he can't see a thing. Like, that's got to be huge for you guys, too, is like, okay, we're in this now, boys. It's back to zeros. Yeah, exactly. I think that's what we were thinking. The mentality was just get one more um, and then see what we can do, right? I mean, uh 
as you said, great shot from Jamal back there. And then obviously a great tip by James. Yeah. I don't even think, as you said, I don't think Seg's even seen it at all. Right. Um, it just kind of glided in the, the right side of the net there. And, and uh, no, it was perfect for us. It definitely gave us again, another little bit of a boost. Absolutely. And then obviously, yeah. So you guys have played, I think a, a fair share of overtime games in this, in these playoffs, at least it seems that way. Um, yeah. And you seem to, you know, it, it either ends early or it ends later, um, which is, you know, it, it could be either good or bad. Um, mm -hmm. The penalty though, that's Provero takes an overtime there. I mean, that's, that's a huge kill for you guys to have to make at that point. Yeah, that's massive. Obviously don't, we don't love that obviously in, in, in like in OT, it definitely puts a lot of stress on our PK, but um, again, those guys are doing a great job. Um, I mean, the guys that don't kill, and I'm one of them, you're sitting on the bench, obviously you're leaving it up to your teammates. And I think all, all like all of us always trust who's ever on that ice, which, uh, which definitely helps. And as you said, that team camaraderie, camaraderie, sorry, um, yeah. is just huge. Right. So, I mean, if Q's out there killing her chance or Lammy or who's ever out there killing penalties and the boys on the back end blocking shots, um, again, like we had total faith in that. And then obviously, uh, losing Spro was tough too. He's obviously one of our top D men, top but defenders. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, at that point in the game though, I mean, again, nothing you can do, put trust in your teammates out there on the kill. And, and sure enough, we got the kill and, and ended up getting that win. Well, that's just it. So then that, yeah, the big kill obviously. And then that leads to your heroics. Um, I want to ask you about this because it felt like to me, like you were out there for quite some time before you scored, like how much energy do you have left in the tank to make that move? I mean, take us through what was going through your mind, because I I'd love to know, First of all, were you thinking at any point just to dump and go to the bench at that point? That's the first thing. Second thing, at what point does it click in your head, hey, I can get through these guys? And then the the question then is, do you, were you surprised at how open you were to you, towards the net to make that move? And then why did you go blocker instead of glove? You've been going glove all playoffs. Yeah. <laughs> Touch on all those points if you could. I don't know, man. That's It was wild to watch. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, honestly, as you said, we I think we were we were running two lines there in overtime. Um, so again, yeah, I was out there for quite a while. As soon as I got the puck, I looked up, I kind of checked over my back shoulders to see uh what the rest of the guys were doing. And all, I think all four were kind of like making their way towards the bench. <laughs> I was like, all right, I, maybe I gotta dump this thing in. So I was just kind of moseying up the sidewall there. Um again. Honestly, I was really thinking of dumping it at that point because I looked up and it was a one on three. There's a guy in front of me, a defender on this side here, and a guy backtracking too. So I was like, all right, I, I really don't know what to do here. I'm, I was thinking about dumping it. I got to the red line. The D's gap was a bit, a bit deeper in the zone. So I was like, all right, maybe I might as well keep kind of carrying it up there. Um, and then fortunately enough, the weak side D, his angle was obviously a little bit off there, as you could, as you yeah. could tell. Um, so I seen a little bit of a gap kind of between the D and this weak side D coming over. Uh, so I decided to just kind of do like a backhand, like flip between yeah. the two of them. And then lucky enough, it was just kind of in some open space. Um, and then when I caught it, picked it up, I seen a little bit uh, of a hole, low blocker. And yeah, instead of shooting well this time, I, I decided to slide her in there. Dude, that was insane. Like. <laughs> I, I was, I was just like, when I was watching it, I was almost in disbelief, to be honest. Like, again, you know, you, most of your goals, the highlight real goals that you've scored in these playoffs have been howitzers glove side. And uh, even like, if you're coming down the wing, like at a hundred mile an hour and you put a glove side, pop the water bottle, make it really showman. Like, do you consider yourself a showman player? Or like, I mean, I don't, I don't know if that's accurate maybe for you, but it's certainly, you got a flair for it, buddy. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. No, I honestly like obviously goal scoring, like it comes a part of the game. Um, again, I'm sure lots of guys would say this, like you can't do it without your teammates either. Right. Like fair enough. Like, I mean, my two line mates, especially like they're always in there, like chance is always playing real well on the defensive side. Lamb is chasing after pucks. Um, like they're again, our D like Fry, Spro, Tidge, who's ever in the lineup. Um, Sammy, like there's like all the boys back there, like they're getting pucks up quick McGowan, you know, they're doing a great job getting it up quick. And that's kind of what we said, obviously the less time you play in our D zone, the more, the more chance we have to get out there and on, on right. the ozone and show our skills. Um, but yeah, no, personally, I just, obviously you got like everybody loves scoring goals. Um, yeah. Again. Yeah. Obviously I like doing it too. Um, it, it, like if you can put some fancy ones in, it's nice. Yeah. You sure. get some people talking about it, whatnot, but um, whatever I can do to help the team win is kind of, kind of what I'm doing right now in playoffs. I mean, if I score and we win, great. If I get zero goals and we win, 
that's even better. Good enough for me. I love it. That's super yeah. humble, man. I love that. Um, you know, not, not cocky or arrogant at all. And I can appreciate that from you. Um, yeah. This St. Mary's Lincoln's connection of Lamaru and Chandler, like these playoffs, you guys have just had such tremendous success um, as a line. Like that's gotta be pretty awesome for you. Yeah, I know. It's great. As I said, I think we kind of work well together. Cause um, again, those guys are our defensive mind and chance is great on faceoffs. Lamy, uh lamy's great positionally and um it's nice because i think they're more both more dishers and passers where uh, i can kind of be that shooter on that line which is nice i think we have that kind of dynamic even uh through all four of our lines right so um we try to have one one or shoot one or two shooters on each line and then the rest of the boys uh you know they're putting pucks on the tape and 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 it's great so um yeah the chemistry between us is is awesome the uh I kind of I kind of chuckled too the first time I saw that face off alignment of the two three I thought that was kind of entertaining. Um, do, you, do you could you shed some light about where that idea came from? Was that your idea? Uh, yeah, we just kind of talk. It, honestly, we just kind of go on every draw, and and <laughs> because Chance has been so successful on it, it's just kind of instead of lining up on the wall where he's and even Q sometimes they snap him straight back. So I find right. our are sometimes spread on the wall. So I'm I'm <laughs> figuring if I'm putting the you know, kind of in that position to shoot, or maybe I can dish off to the right or the left. I mean, I, I shoot most of the time, but um, right. like, it's nice having those options definitely. Um, but with <laughs> those guys winning draws the way they are, it just, it, it, it makes sense to, uh, to line up the way it's harder to defend right off that draw. Yeah, absolutely. And you guys have been killing it on the face off. I mean, you guys have been dominating uh, these series so far in the playoffs and obviously game one, I think as well with, with controlling off the face off. Cause that's huge for you guys offensively to be able to get that draw either in the offensive zone or defensive zone and start a play. hundred percent, hundred percent. No, honestly, they did a great job. Um, they should even constructing that team. I mean, Kaser, Kaser's done an unreal job too. Um, you know, bringing guys in and, and putting guys in certain roles um, that are obviously working very, very well right now, as you can tell. Um, and as you said to the, the team camaraderie and how close this team is, uh, it, honestly, it's one of a kind. So hopefully we can keep this uh, special run going here. Yeah, and a shout out to Nolan DeConing also leads the league in uh, playoff victories with eight this yeah. year. He's just been outstanding since, uh, you know, game, well, since uh, the first series, he's been excellent, I feel. Yeah, no, he's been awesome. He's a brick wall back there for us. Um, every game, we, again, we got so much trust in him back there. We know he's going to make the saves he needs to. And and uh, again, he also makes some of the saves where you don't even expect him to make. And that kind of yeah. gives us a as well absolutely uh 100 percent um okay so let's uh shift focus here to this weekend big two game weekend for you guys uh games two and three um first of all let's talk about game two at the hive uh back in the alveson barn for this super league cup final game number two you guys coming in there with a one nothing lead that's obviously huge that's pretty much speaks for itself but i guess what are you expecting in game two are you expecting more of the same or are you expecting a shift um Honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm expecting a pretty similar game um, coming from both sides. I mean, it was pretty even. Obviously, we went, we took it to OT, 2-2, um, two, two, pretty evenly matched. I mean, Odd Man Russia were both pretty pretty offensive teams. So, uh, like us exchanging the rushes like that, I feel like we'll, you'll see more of, the, more of that in game two. Um, hopefully, the ice conditions are a little bit better in LV <laughs> and uh, you can be able to get back and score on a few more goals. I mean, Deeks is probably happy that, uh, that uh, he doesn't have to worry about you know, getting so many odd man rushes all the time on them. But uh, right. I mean, the rest of the boys wouldn't mind putting a couple more pucks in the back on that for sure. Absolutely. And then uh, the last one I'll give you here is obviously we talked a little bit about it is the crowd support and the fan support from Alvinston. They've traveled in droves to go and see you guys on the road and they've come out in full form at home at the hive uh, as a player for you guys to play in front of those electric fans what does that mean for you guys? And is that something that's commonly discussed? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, every game we come out, I, even for warm ups, you come out and uh, you look up and, and, and the rink's already full, which is crazy. Right? You never even see that in any league where, where your arena is jam packed and you're stepping on the ice, you know, 40 minutes before your game. And, and people are even in there when you're off ice warming up or just rolling in the rink uh, yourself and you're looking out and there's already a couple hundred people sitting in the stands. Right. It's uh it's a pretty cool and, and, and special thing, especially for some of the local guys, um, like being from the Alvinson area and, right. and kind of where this team started a couple of years ago um, to where they are now. Um, I, I have nothing but good things to say about, about the organization as a whole and 
uh, like Hater and Cumming and like all those boys, they, uh, they, 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 they've done a really, really good job with, uh, with even like the in-game promotions and um, getting fans involved and all the special, uh, special event nights. It's been, uh, it's been pretty special to watch and be a part of, that's for sure. Is this the most fun you've ever had at a period of time in hockey? Yeah, it's definitely up there. That's for sure. Um, playing close to home again. I mean, I've haven't been able to do that for years. So um, having lots of friends and family come to every game, and and with all these guys on the team, it's uh, yeah, it, yeah, it's been special for sure. It's been a lot of fun. Excellent. Uh, we've been talking with Brennan Feezy, number eighty nine, uh, playoff leading scorer, and uh, just an absolute delight. And uh, best of luck in game number two and three this upcoming weekend. Uh, we'll make sure to check in with you, and we appreciate you coming on and doing this. Thanks so much, pal. Yeah, no problem at all. Anytime. All right, here, folks. Uh, Wash the Hockey Podcast, Finals Edition. Uh, Alvis and Killer Bees lead the Tilsonburg Thunder 3-2, or excuse me, one nothing in the best of seven after a 3-2 overtime victory in game number one in Tilsonburg. We're very pleased to be joined by Bill Ryan. Uh, Bill, it's great to have you on here, pal. I, I believe this is the first time this year. Uh, just absolutely great to have you on, and uh, welcome back. Thanks. I'm getting too old to remember if it's the first time this year or not, but I'll take your I'll take your word for it. <laughs> I think I would remember, but it could have been very the very first one maybe this year. I I, I honestly yeah, don't know either. Yeah. I'm getting up there in age too, so the seasons I, the seasons are turning and blending into each other now. So well, and that's just it, right? Is that like honestly, uh, when and when it comes to this league and when it comes to this hockey and everything else, I feel like sometimes I get so into it that I really don't know which day is up and which day which day is what. Um, I just feel so invested in it that when it comes down to this time of year, I'm like, oh man, is it over yet? <laughs> is well, that I, can, a back I, I can, I can relate. Sometimes it seems like <laughs> last season just ended and this season's over, right? So, it, well, that's just it. But I mean, or almost, almost over, I guess. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like we're uh, working teachers' hours or something like that. We can't <laughs> wait for summer. You know what I mean? Exactly. Exactly. All right. So yeah, game one is in the books of the Washington Super League Cup final, and uh, what a game one it was. Uh, I mean. Yeah, there was so there's so many subplots and storylines we could talk about. Um, but I mean, was like what was game one to you? What was your thoughts on it? I thought uh, I thought the game one pretty much was a feeling out game. Okay. Both teams kind of seeing what they needed, uh, what each team needed to do, what to expect from each line and each team, and you know each position player and each goaltender. Right. I I felt both teams played a little bit tentative until maybe the overtime. And then uh, they open things up. You have the two highest scoring teams in the league yes. in the final playing each other. And to see a 3-2 game, I was a little bit surprised. Although hats off to both goalies because they made some phenomenal saves in the game. So Yeah, and like, I, you know what, I, I was kind of torn, like a little bit undecided about how I was looking at this game, whether I saw it coming or not. Um, when it comes to a final, you expect it to be better defensively. Um, you don't expect the high scoring shootout games that we saw in the Stratford Alvinson series. I knew there'd be a little bit of a regression there. Um, what like there was lots that I took away from it though. I thought it was really interesting how the D men were so activated as Trey often called. Um, I, I, I thought the, like both teams had their fair share of chances. The goaltending was good. I thought both teams were fairly disciplined that there wasn't a whole lot of penalties being taken. Um, and then, yeah, like you, you, the big players showed out. Absolutely. Both teams, top guys seem to be the best players on, on game one. Um, goal posts were probably the star of the game for both teams. I think both teams had two or three of those. Right. Um, right. And then a couple of big saves from the goalies, but uh, I suspect it's going to be a very tight series. I expect it's going to be a long series. Um, watch, watching that first game, you know, a couple of bounces either way and either team could have won that game in, in regulation. Right. So. Right. Um, phenomenal crowd support in both buildings. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, so and that's the next part I wanted to touch on because it seems like we're destined for that great crowd support in both buildings. I mean, you guys, did you have a sellout? I think Trey mentioned that a lot of the seats were filled except for ones a, that had no bottoms on. <laughs> yeah, she was pretty full. I would say she's well over 1,000 people, 1,100 people in there, but uh, we don't really do a head count. We just kind of look right. at the building. If it's full, it's full. Right. You know, right. Al Alveson probably filled 35 to 40% of the crowd with their with their fans, so it was uh, and And from your perspective... Yeah, Wonderful. like that's what I mean. From your perspective, it's got to be pretty pretty neat to be able to visualize that and how into it they are involved in the the series they're going to be. Absolutely, and and our fans have been traveling the same way. Down in Tilbury, we had probably two hundred people there for Game Five, right? Game or Game Six or whatever it was, we beat them in. Right, 
Yeah. Like, and again, I mean, it, it just goes to show you how much this league has come along in year number three. Absolutely. The visions that we had starting this up, uh, we've exceeded that in most facilities. It's it's wonderful to see. I, I looked at the crowds in Stratford. I looked at the crowds in Strathroy when we were there and the crowds have been in Tilsonburg and Albanston and Tilbury. It's, uh, it's very nice to see, you know, looking at my, you know, 15 years of doing senior hockey, I haven't seen these kind of crowd support in a long time, which is and very refreshing, both as a, as a league administrator and, oh, are we there? Yep, we're here. Oh, sorry, my computer's acting up here. <laughs> You're good. Both as a league administrator and uh, as a, you know, involved with the team for a lot of years, it's a real refreshing thing to see and uh, see the fan support and, you know, people buying merchandise. It's, it, it's, it's wonderful. It's good for every team. Yeah, it's a definite win for Washell. It's something I keep saying as a narrative to these games that I've been able to call uh, with certain people, Brian Hawley, Joel Campbell being a couple of them. Um, we've just been treated to absolutely phenomenal hockey. So not only have the crowds turned out, but the players have turned out in numbers and droves this year, and the, the talent is through the roof. Oh, absolutely. I've already got, I think, 10 or 12 emails in the last two weeks for guys wanting to skate for next year. And we haven't, you know, obviously I haven't thought about that because we don't start skating until the summertime sometime. Right. But it's, uh, it's wonderful that the players are taking notice all over the province, which is great. And I think the streaming has a big part in that, doesn't it? Absolutely. You know, when we, when we set up Sportfee originally, we said, you know, are we going to keep people out of the building? And I think it's done the exact opposite. Right. I think right. people watching the product on, on Sportfee or on the WSHL live landing page have uh, have caught on that, wait a minute, I got to go watch this in person. This is good hockey, right? So. Yeah, I mean, it's the 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 chatter is endless, and I really feel like the energy is is really at an all time high right now. Um, for Tilsonburg, for Tilsonburg, obviously, um, you know, a third straight trip to the finals. Um, do you think that they feel a lot of pressure to get it done this year? I think some guys might. Um, other guys think uh, think that it's a foregone conclusion. It really depends on the personality of the individual. True, but you know, there are some guys that have been there for all three that are you know, anxious to, uh, to make it happen. So at the end of the day, you got to play the games to see what happened and play it to your best of your ability and uh, may the best team win. Yeah. Oh, well, I agree with you. And uh, like I said, I think it's, it's just kind of like a remarkable thing when you, when you watch how these teams got here. Um, I don't, I don't know if you can really, could you really stack up which team has had the harder trip to the finals? Well, I'm going to probably say we did uh, only because we defeated ourselves late in the regular season. With we had injuries. a whole rash of injuries and work related right, right. issues. And, you know, we went from being well out in front first place to battling to tie for first place and ultimately ending up second. Right. Um, right. Which is some adversity we had to go through, which I think was good for the team. Um, and it showed in Strathroy, we came out ready to go and, you know, made a fairly short series of that one. And, uh, you know, same in Tilbury, we, we took a very good team in Tilbury to uh, to six games, but you know, end of the day, we we won it. At least we didn't have to do the reverse sweep and do it in seven like we did last year. That's all right. Yeah, I mean, obviously, then yeah, the 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 way we we got here is different. Um, Absolutely. And and from a league standpoint, um, just if you could, the the rise of Alvinson from when they were in year one has to be pretty remarkable. I mean, oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's, you know, it's impressive went... what they've done. They went from a less skilled, more banging physical type team to a to a highly skilled younger team. Like they're probably, I, if I had to guess, I'd say they're probably the youngest team in the league when it comes when you look at the people on the roster. Right. And uh, you know that all comes from you know people doing the work in the summertime and you know doing the recruiting and you know convincing them to go to Albanston versus going you know somewhere else. Right. So right. It's and a yeah, process. I mean, it's, it's taken a lot of years to to build a player pool. I know in Tilsburg, so you know they've sped theirs up pretty good. So. Yeah. And like I say, it seems to like they finally have figured it out how to play and how to get those guys that have bought in to the system. And obviously, it's just great for the league in general to see a team like that come from what they were to what they are now, Washell Super League Finals competitors. And really, I think this is a great matchup for Washell is Alvinson Tilsmer. Yeah, I've said from day one, I want every team when they play the every other team to not know who's going to win. And that's kind of where we've gotten to with a, with a few exceptions this year. And I think next year will only be that much better. I agree um, with that. Alvinson's got a, an excellent club. Stratford had an excellent club. Strathroy, Tilbury, you know, Woodstock. There was any team that if they got hot, that could be sitting where Tilsbury is today. So that's a, that's a, a wonderful thing to see. Yeah. Well, and the, the, just, if you need an example of that, just look at the standings from the regular season. Exactly. 
<laughs> could throw a lasso around six teams, right? So <laughs> pretty, pretty awesome how it could have ended up with a, with a, a, a plethora of different matchups. I mean, that would Absolutely. have been really intriguing to see. And we're only going to build from that. Um, uh, I guess, what are you expecting from this weekend as the series now shifts to Alvinston for game two and then back to Tilsonburg for three? Well, I'm going to wear my Tilsonburg hat. I expect, I expect Tilsonburg to do quite well, you know. Um, yeah. But it isn't going to be easy. It's, it's going to come down to uh, – Goaltending and discipline, in my opinion. You know, both teams have incredibly strong power plays. They also are very good shorthanded. But uh, basically, you got you got to stay out of the box. You got to stay disciplined. I think for either of these teams to be successful and come out at the end of this. So, it's uh, it should be a wild ride. But I, I suspect Tilson we're going to be up two one. But I wouldn't be surprised me if it's two one the other way or who knows, right? So. Anyway, w at the end of the day, whoever watches or watches on Sportfy is going to be entertained. That's the, that's the best part about it. And that we have people talking in, in massive numbers that we haven't seen before. And it's just been such a win for this league. Uh, I final... look at the, sorry, sorry. Go no, go ahead. I, say, I look at the, the numbers, the, the Sportfy numbers, and I don't know if I've made you privy to them or not yet, but our Sportfy views this year, as of the end of February, were 15,000 individual viewers. That's and that didn't stuff. count. That didn't count the key playoffs that we're into now. Um, there's been games with seven to eight hundred viewers watching a game. And hats off to Elveston. They're actually their numbers on the streams are probably the best or the highest on average. So, well, they're certainly the most vocal. We can give you. We can give them that. That is true. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> and and you know, and I I can obviously in in the situation of doing games over there. Um, and how many people are texting me at any given time saying, Hey, give me a shout out. Like it's, it's wild. Well, and that honestly. small building too. It just seems, it seems that much more magnified, right? Cause you can it hear does. and see everything. So yeah, it's yeah. cool, man. Honestly, it's been so much fun. And obviously hats off to Trey Hamilton and John Delaney. who have done a great job for you guys all season long. Yeah. Um, Trey's done a tremendous job with the thunder hour podcast. And I really am uh, like, I, I love the work that they do. Yeah. Yeah. He's good. Yeah. He's, he's, he's dialed in, he's dedicated, but you know, all of these teams, you know, it's great to have these public personas and these guys doing the play by play, but none of these teams are anything without all the people behind the scenes. Right. So um, we got to give shout outs to them every once in a while too, for sure. Absolutely. Uh, and like I say, it's, it's about people recognizing people, giving the credit that they deserve. Um, I'm Absolutely. a big, big person on that. So, you know, definitely hats off to them. Um, last question I'll pose to you from a Washa league standpoint, is there anything that you could indulge us in right now as to what is in the works for next year without getting into too much detail? Yeah, there's, there's not, a, there's, there's not a lot I want to say right now. Cause there's a lot of things, a lot of irons in the fire. Okay. Um, but I will tell you that it will be a different look to the league next year. Okay. Um, there will be, I, I'm assuming there'll be some new teams. There's, uh, you know, there's possibly new divisions. There's uh, a bunch of things in the work, uh, okay. a lot of social media and branding things that we're working on and, you know, corporate sponsors, that kind of stuff. So right now it's tough to make any of it official because it's all still, you know, the paper and the ink is still wet kind of thing. So right. we do anticipate some major, some major changes and some big news. And, uh, you know, I think it, I think it's, you know, what are we going into year four? It's only going to keep getting better, right? So the the message is stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Excellent, I'm excellent. Not, the message is I'm non-committal, but I expect good things. Well, hey, that's all we can hope for. And uh, we, Washoe fans have been blessed for three years now. You and Jamie from me starting it uh, from the day one and where it is now. Hats off to both of you guys and the people behind the scenes that we, we aren't mentioning by name, uh, but we know what they do. And... Uh, the, this product is on fire right now and we can only hope for better and bigger things. So hats off to you. Thank you for, so much for everything you've done and continued to do on the daily. Thank and you. we look forward to what's next. Yeah, we can't, we can't do any of this without any of the people driving each team. You know, it's a, it's, as much as we all want to beat each other on the ice, we've got 11 partners and, uh, and a whole bunch of, uh, you know, strings of hundreds of volunteers that are making this grow. It's, it's great that Jamie and I, you know, and and Dave Casson and Mike Colley, for that matter, who had the original visit, vision, started it all up. But it takes it takes a village, if you will, to uh, make it all happen. Love that. We've been talking with Bill Ryan and uh, Bill, uh, obviously for the Thunder. Best of luck the rest of the way. Um, and uh, we really look forward to seeing what's going to happen the rest of the way in this final. It should be entertaining. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks very much, Andrew.
Uh, so yeah, guys, once again, I want to thank Joel Campbell. I want to thank Brennan Feezy and I want to thank Bill Ryan for hopping, hopping onto the podcast and, and speaking with us uh, for this week's edition. Um, we have the 509 Sports Online Pack coming up here to end it. And uh, before we do that, I just want to say thank you to everyone for watching another episode of the Washer Podcast. Thank you very much for tuning in on Sportfy for the live games and the streams. And thank you very much for all of your Washer support throughout the course of this season. It's been a wonderful ride. Uh, don't want it to end. And uh, looking forward to seeing how it concludes this uh, year three of the Washer League. So without further ado, 509 Sports Online. Have a good week, everyone.